uh, welcome back we are starting uh, quarter 4 um, session 31 uh, however today in quarter 4 we have a little backlog of uh, quarter 3 earlier um, we used to just uh, give you some links of uh, uh, internet uh, sites, uh, where a lot of uh, free literature uh, is available. Uh, but those who come, who have come with uh, um, us till session 30 uh, with patience, um, they uh, are certainly taking their English uh, quite seriously. So, at this stage uh, it may not be a bad idea to make some suggestions regarding uh, reading which authors would benefit them uh, regarding improving their English. Of course, uh, I am not uh, telling here about good literature only, okay? uh, because there are um, many, many um, authors uh, who are very good as, as authors, whose books are uh, excellent literature, uh, but then um, for that a lot of time and a lot of patience is needed, all of you may not have that. Okay. So, here I will um, uh, give you a few suggestions on which authors to read, uh, if you do not have enormous amount of time uh, and if your reading speed is right now not very um, high. In that case, you would re need those books or those authors, that style of uh, stories and uh, uh, the kind of stories, uh, which get hold of you and pull you. Okay. So, um, you perhaps do not have enormous amount of time to relish uh, very deep good literature for a long time, because uh, then midway uh, you may get uh, stuck with a lot of work and uh, your flow may stop. Okay. So, right now we are talking about flow those stories, those authors, which will get hold of you and not let you easily. So, first round say you read these authors, Satyajitre books are originally Bengali, uh, but they have been translated and that itself gives you 35 stories over 2000 pages and these are detective stories to begin with and very beautifully written and originally they were written in simple uh, Bengali because uh, it was supposed to be for uh, youngsters, okay? uh, 14 years, 16 years, 18 years, 20 years and so on. Okay? But interestingly, even a 50 year old man would find these stories interesting. Apart from being in simple language, make note that when a translator translates a book from one language to another, he is trying to convey the original story he is not typically trying to show his great style in the language in which he is translating. And typically such translations are in simple language and these books particularly are in simple language, because their original was also very simple. And these stories are very um, uh, well written, interesting and since there is a mystery, so uh, you cannot stop it easily, you need to see the solution and they are written in a very jovial style. So, you proceed very fast and these other books are also, other authors also have a very fast uh, pace that uh, you want to know always what happens next, what happens next and reading every page and turning is relatively easy. Next round you can go to these, R. Stanley Gardner is again detective stories, uh, there the hero is actually um, a lawyer. Okay and those stories are um, quite fast. Okay. Uh, Isaac Asimov is science fiction, Agatha Christie is detective story, very famous. Uh, again at by this time, uh, I am expecting that your reading speed will improve, your language skills will also improve and so you will be um, uh, able to um, read and appreciate and enjoy uh, Tolkien, Wodehouse and Conan Doyle. If you can enjoy up to this segment and ask for more, uh, then that means your English is good. Okay. But then if you go into literature, uh, then before you uh, put a stop, 
uh, you must read some of the classics and uh, greatest are perhaps uh, um, these and of course, Charles Dickens. So, Charles Dickens I have not mentioned because Charles Dickens is uh, relatively slow, okay. uh, but Jane Austen and Charlotte Bronte you must read and of course, many other things you can read. Um, so, far as grammar is concerned um, our uh, suggestion is Nesfield and Nesfield only. Okay. Um, there are some good books on vocabulary building uh, which you may um, uh, read at your leisure and they are very interesting reading. Uh, with these things we continue and So, what next? Now, we have got over 11,000 registrants out of them, I am sure 1000 are doing it seriously. And in between we have chalked out module 4 and module 3 got executed first time okay, with you. What next? The next questions are what can you do and what do you intend to do? One question arises, why should we do anything? I have learned my English. Okay, but make note that you have learnt your English or somebody says that in my age not much anyway can be learnt fine, but how do you ensure that those others who are dear to you, how do you ensure that they learn, they are not deprived of this important um, necessity in their professional life. So, you cannot ensure that individually unless all of us together guarantee a system, a society in which it comes as a matter of routine. Okay. So, therefore, if many of you take up the banner and continue not necessarily through exactly the ways by which I am showing this course with the same intention, with the same objectives, then a lot can be accomplished. For example, we have seen that from 910 to 11000, we have come within a span of 2 years. Now, what can happen over the next 2 years? In 2016, perhaps we succeed in one more classroom round and one more online version. Perhaps 20 of you succeed in your endeavors in replicating the program. Perhaps EPP versions are developed with 3 or 4 other languages as the common local language and out of those 3 or 4 languages perhaps one is Russian, anything is possible you never know. Okay. Then in 2017 what can happen? Perhaps a total number of 40 different centers of EPP develop at several places, perhaps improvements and better alternatives emerge, perhaps many teachers and schools and coaching classes implement EPP versions and its alternatives regularly in their classrooms. Then what happens in 2018? Perhaps there will be 12,34,567 registrants or associates in EPP courses. If that happens, I am not telling that it will happen, but it is not impossible. If this happens, then you and I will know that we have put in motion a system, so that 7 years later when these children come out of their school 2025 onwards completing school with an acceptable level of English proficiency would be common just like riding a bicycle or verifying the grocery bills. So, it will be that common okay. and then you and I will no more need to worry about this largest reason of unemployability of your children and other favorite youngsters in whose careers, in whose life you have an interest. I am continuing in quarter 4 with a lot of expectation that this idea, this theme will be taken up by others and continued forward. Okay. At this stage, um, we need to clear a few um, administrative issues. Um, in the um, in the um, 
interface uh, recently uh, I wrote an announcement uh, in which uh, uh, I mentioned that in view of the large number of assignments uh, submitted uh, it is uh, not feasible to grade all of them and uh, therefore, our first priority uh, will be to uh, concentrate on the grading of uh, the assignment submitted by those people, those participants uh, who are appearing in the exam and uh, uh, trying to acquire a certificate. Uh, however, um, apart from uh, these people who are appearing in the exam, uh, there are uh, quite a good number of people uh, who have been um, very regularly following through the course and submitting assignments. Uh, and uh, mm, they are actually mm, uh, real assets uh, of the project and uh, therefore, uh, we want to mm, uh, spend some amount of uh, our active effort in uh, evaluating their assignments also. And um, our definition of uh, really serious participants of the course uh, is uh, that those who um, are going to submit um, at least uh, 30 to, to 35 assignments out of 40, uh, they are certainly um, very serious participants and they are the assets of the um, program. Uh, and therefore, um, at this stage when we are running uh, session 31, uh, which means uh, up to session um, 26 uh, have gone and for that for which the assignments have been due. So, out of these those who have already submitted uh, more than 20 assignments, uh, we call them uh, serious participants. And therefore, we are interested in um, grading or evaluating their assignments and um, uh, trying to see uh, how well the course progresses in the real academic sense away from exams and marks and certificates. Uh, but then it is a problem for us uh, to um, identify uh, those participants uh, who have submitted 20 or more, okay? because for that purpose we will need to uh, search through thousands of uh, mails, which is uh, uh, not uh, a good idea. Therefore, those of you who have already submitted more than 20 assignments, uh, to them I uh, make this request uh, that please um, uh, drop a mail. Uh, to this address uh, epp at iitk dot ac dot in uh, with the subject line more than 20 assignments. Okay. So, the moment we uh, receive uh, your mail at uh, this address with this subject line, uh, we will get your email address and from that it will become very easy for us to look through the thousands of emails that uh, are sitting in the um, uh, PLT course site. Okay. So, then we can quickly uh, see uh, some of you have submitted 24 assignments, some of you have submitted 25, 23, 22 and uh, those participants um, we will uh, keep in a particular special database, uh, whose assignments we will um, go through uh, seriously. Others also we are going through seriously, but for a different purpose, this one for a purely academic purpose. Okay. Okay. So, now um, we come to um, the actual discussion of uh, the course material. Uh, I have already um, uh, discussed with you that uh, in the um, three quarters that we have covered, um, we have basically um, done uh, three important uh, things. Uh, one is uh, of course, apart from uh, the letters part of it. Okay. So, one we have uh, uh, covered a large number of words in word families, uh, for which uh, 
uh, for which the summary was given here. So, this is the entire summary of all the word families that we have uh, covered and that covers the uh, vowel sound patterns. Okay. And apart from that, we covered a, a segment on syntax and in that the major mainstream part of the discussion uh, basically concentrated on the development of major forms of sentences. And um, in that, uh, we have quite a few things uh, to revisit and this was the um, sheet, this, is, this was the slide which we earlier um, saw without these uh, uh, annotations. Now, you see uh, each of these is actually like a seed of a number of sentences and um, uh, from this for example, you can actually get uh, nine sentences. Okay. So, out of the subject part you take we, I or he, in fact 9 as already written here, okay. but in place of we you put any other plural subject, okay. in place of he you put any other singular subject other than I and you. So, it will be the similar structure. So, 9 sentences already are there contained in this seed okay. and similarly say this one. So, here, here we have got um, a total of uh, how many sentences? 3 into 12, 36, 36 sentences, okay. because uh, if you take the straightforward question um, like are we given something, okay, whatever you put after this is immaterial for the purpose of the study of the structure of the sentences. So, if you put the straightforward question are we given? Um, then that is one kind of sentence. Okay. So, that is uh, the first line, the third line and so on, okay. first line, third line and fifth line. And then if you uh, expect that we are actually given and you would be surprised uh, if uh, it turns out that we are not given and then you want to ask the question of uh, clarification and then you ask um, are we not given? In that case, a not comes here. Normally, not comes here is a very simple statement, but it does not remain simple if will be is the case, if it is future. In that case, B drops from here and goes to support given, okay, the verb which it is supporting at present. Okay. And okay, even if not does not come, in this case, the subject itself will cause the same effect. Okay. In this case, the subject itself will cause the same effect. Okay. So, the corresponding um, sentences are in the rows 2, 4 and 6. And then, if it is not a simple interrogative sentence, but a query, okay. why are we given? Okay. Then, that wh word comes in the beginning and then the corresponding 6 rows are here. Okay. So, in this case also in the passive voice, B would come here. So, this seed gives rise to 36, 36 uh, sentences, okay. this give, seed gives rise to 9 and so on. Okay. So, it is a worthwhile exercise to um, uh, open each of these seeds and see if all the sentences make sense and whether we are capable of making all the sentences correctly. Okay. Every student should verify that he is making all the sentences correctly. So, just look at the seed and try to construct all kinds of sentences from here and then verify whether all of them are correct. You see there are two issues involved here that I am suggesting in the exercise. One is to um, uh, see that you are making the sentences correct okay. and the second is that the sentences themselves that get framed by this seed uh, are valid sentences. For example, uh, if we had not gone through a little carefully and by the pattern present past future present past future, if we had filled those patterns here also, then you know we would be uh, giving rise to some uh, uh, sentences which are invalid. Okay. And by that analysis that whether all the sentences coming out of it are really valid you will very clearly notice 
that the future case here will not make sense. Okay. So, who knows out of all these that are still there perhaps some seed taking some option gives rise to wrong sentence. So, on your own for your side for your satisfaction you should verify that all these seeds are really correct okay. and from the seeds all the sentences that you can construct are really valid sentences and they appear in the form in which the seed will generate them. Okay. So, the seed should not generate some mutant which cannot exist. Okay. So, this is the purpose of putting these annotations here which are to help. So, in the exercise also for today um, we have got some exercise uh, in which you will be asked to um, frame some sentences from some of the seeds. Okay. Sometime back I told you that apart from um, the stress on letters uh, in this course till now in the three um, quarters. Uh, we have uh, done um, three um, broad uh, works. Okay. We covered three broad items. Now, one uh, was uh, the vocabulary, which we covered through um, word families, and in that, whatever does not fit in the rule in the logic, so we tried to mention those uh, samples as exceptions. And the second was this um, tense structure, uh, which we uh, started um, since uh, session um, uh, 3, we completed in session 29, in which finally we culminated in the structure, major forms of sentences, this one, in which the entire tense structure has been summarized. And in the um, uh, study of syntax, whatever does not conform to these rules exactly or whatever is special inside them, uh, which uh, uh, an Indian student or let us say an, a non-English or non-European student is likely to confuse. So, those uh, things in between through separate sessions we tried to uh, cover. Um, in that category, I would put the techniques of uh, interpretation and expression. Uh, then uh, special items like uh, articles and phrases which are specific to um, English. Um, when I say specific to English, I mean that uh, different from Indian languages, okay? uh, because they may be uh, similar in many other European languages also. So, such specific items like articles and phrases we covered, which are either not uh, used in Indian languages or the purpose is covered in different manners. Besides, uh, because of uh, certain limitations on the usual normal syntax rules of English, there are some special structures uh, which we covered separately in uh, some sessions in between like dummy subjects, the topic of uh, complements and then the structures like have to and used to. Okay. Apart from that, Throughout the course at different contexts, um, we gave special importance to the different rules of special verbs like do, will, be, have supporting the main verbs of the sentence. Apart from that, at the end in the summary of supporting action and the list of special verbs, we gave particular coverage to other special verbs including defective ones other than do, will, be and have. For example, can, must, should. So, these verbs have, these verbs are very small in number, they are handful, but they have some special ideas, special arrangements in which they appear okay. and they have some very specialized rules which operate only for these uh, handful of uh, verbs. And in some cases, a particular rule operates for only one or two verbs, even that is um, uh, the case in some situations. Okay. So, these are these special structures and special items are uh, the topics which uh, uh, typically confuse 
a learner from uh, non-English or non-European backgrounds, in particular Indian students. And therefore, uh, while learning English, uh, more so uh, while uh, teaching English, uh, we need to give special em emphasis and special coverage to these items and um, try to ensure that uh, these uh, issues and these structures in English is not confused by um, uh, us and students, children uh, who uh, typically uh, do not come from an English environment. Beyond this, there are uh, issues both in vocabulary and uh, in syntax and of course, in the overall um, uh, idea of composition, uh, which uh, in the uh, straight jacketed uh, necessary component of quarters uh, 1 to 3 uh, could not be accommodated and those issues of vocabulary and um, uh, syntax we will be covering in the coming sessions. Thank you.